going to go meet with Sister Miwa, uh, inshallah, in Shizuka. And uh, apart from the interview, we will be taking about an hour's drive away from Shizuka to Lake Kawaguchi area, which is one of the best areas to see and view Mount Fuji. You can actually see the whole mountain uh, from where we are going to be. So I'm really excited about that. I heard that the uh, weather is not going to be, well, it depends. They say it's cloudy and they, some say it's sunny. So it really depends on, not say our luck, but it depends, uh, inshallah, if Allah permits, we will be able to see it. Alhamdulillah, we have arrived in Shizuka. This is our very first day and uh, it, the sun is out and it feels great. And inshallah, I'm going to be meeting with uh, Sister Miwa uh, to go and see uh, what she does, uh, when, where she teaches, uh, teaches Islam at the Institute and, and also um, the children that she teaches as well, inshallah. So what do you know about Miwa? What do you know about her? Uh, from what I know, uh, she is uh, an advocate for education. Uh, she is a Japanese Muslim revert. Uh, she is married uh, to a Muslim as well. She has a few children here in Shizuka. And she's also uh, very much involved with the Islamic institution here. Yeah. So she's married to a Japanese weaver as well? I believe that she's married to a Moroccan man, uh, could possibly be a born Muslim. So I'm interested to actually know and find out how she met him, how she found Islam, and what's it like being a Japanese Muslim teaching Islam in Japan. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Hi. Hi. Good morning, Sister Miwa. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you, Nina? Mm. Alhamdulillah. Thank Go you name. so much for having me. Marhaba. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Marhaba. <laughs> Ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaba. <laughs> yeah, please, Patricia's here. Thank you. This is your um, Chizuka Muslim Association. Thank you. Mashallah. Um, to wow, it looks very nice. Thank you. Yeah, so can you... Musala. Okay, this is your musala. So yeah. basically, you have your prayers here, your Friday prayers as well? Yes, and for the gathering and then kids class mm -hmm. and also the socialization. Oh, mashallah. So how long has this happened? Like how long have you had this place and how did you come to find and actually start um, the association? Uh, we formed the association in 2010, mm -hmm. May. Oh, okay, that's about yes. eight years ago. Yes, it's about eight mm -hmm. years ago and uh, we started with the volunteers, you know, basically the Muslims living in this area. Mm. You know, we gathered and let's say let's start a one unified uh, organization of sure. Muslims. And it's, it's, it's based, uh, now it's based on volunteering? Yes, from it's the all based, yes, based, based on the volunteering. And then, uh, but we are trying to be recognized as an uh, official uh, religious organization in Japan. Mm. Yes, we call it uh, Shukyo Hojin. Shukyo Shukyo Hojin. Shukyo Hojin. <laughs> yes. Hi, okay. Yeah, it will uh, give us a certain uh, status in the society mm. to be recognized as a you know practical religious organization. Okay. Uh, uh, recognized by the government. Recognized by the government. I see. Yes. Mashallah. Well, we are aiming that for uh, many years, but uh, we finally applied okay. a year ago. So we're waiting for two more years to go. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah, I pray that it goes through <laughs> successfully. I would like to ask you just a couple of uh, personal questions about how you found Islam, if you don't mind. Um, if you could share, uh, what was it like before you, you reverted to Islam? What was your uh, experience uh, or perception of Islam? Okay. Well, before, before I became Muslim, um, my idea about Islam is something so far away from the world that I used to live in, you know something so exotic <laughs> and I also had some stereotypic idea about Islam that uh, people in Islam very strict uh, following the very strict rules and also sometimes I've heard the news about you know uh, terrorists of uh, Muslim extremists so I had a little scary image about them as well as the much of the disrespectful treatment of a woman that was my idea about Islam but at the same time I also liked the architecture you know also the Islamic art designs I was also fascinated by them mm. as well so well, two different uh, views of Islam 
Okay, so and that was happening, your, those feelings were happening at the same time? You yes. Know, that you had mixed, mixed feelings. So what was it about Islam that attracted you to come closer? How did you find Allah? Actually, um, when I was studying in, United, in the United States, I met a friend on the campus. She was an American Muslim sister. Mashallah is a very practicing sister. And she became a very good friend of mine. And I asked her a couple of questions why she's wearing the headscarf and wearing the long clothes in the midst of the summer. But she answered me very nice way that uh, she answered to my questions and uh, in a very nice manner. And then I really liked her personality. Very nice person, smart and bright, intelligent. So I became curious why she has this Islamic faith while well, she has such a nice character and, uh, and smart, being smart. Mm. So that was my very you know, genuine encounter with Islam. Okay. And then I started to research on Islam online and I found, read many articles about them, about it. And what attracted me the most about Islam is the simpleness, you know, mm. the simple, simpleness of the relationship between God and the, you know, human. There's nothing comes between Allah and, you know, me. <laughs> so that was the one of the most attraction to me about Islam. SubhanAllah. So, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, which way is the Qibla here then? Actually, this is the direction of the Qibla. Okay. We have the sajada here. Yeah. And uh, mm. this is the Qibla. So, we... This way. So, they are, I can the see the carpet is yeah, also carpet made um, and that and direction. Mm. So we put some decorations, wall decorations. Actually, mm. this is from the donation from the Malaysian designer. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yes. it is. So this oh. is the, you know. Oh, this is nice. It's a part of, it's a part of my home country here. <laughs> Mashallah, it feels like home already. And I noticed that you've got a lot of books here. Yes, we have a books. Uh, it's pretty printed in Japanese. Oh, this okay. Is, uh, also donated material, but. Uh, this introduces uh, how to live an uh, Islam, like an Islamic way of living, mm. and the 50 attractions. It's all written in Japanese. I it's see. a very good uh, introduction of Islam to Japanese. Yes. So, is, is, do, you, do you usually hand this out to yes. a lot of the Japanese uh, non Muslims here? Yes. So that they I do. can have a, a better yes. understanding? Yes. In Japanese culture, mm -hmm. has reading always been a big part of, of life? I think it, so. normally no because I, I know yes. there's a lot of a lot of books and people reading and even on TV there's mm. a lot of writing yes it is and uh, you know the literacy rate mm. in Japan is very high Ooh. and uh, you know let's say like uh, almost 99 percent of the population can read Japanese Mashallah. I mean you know except some few unfortunate people remember the moment you said your, your shahada? Mm -hmm. Was it was it here in Japan? Uh, was it at any particular uh, masjid or Islamic center that you did this? Actually, I took shahada while I was in the United States. Oh, wow. In, yeah, in, in the, the house of the friend, my friend, and my sister friend, yes. She invited a lot of sisters, you know, to do the well, shahada, you know, ceremony and party for me. I was, I feel blessed and I feel so happy, you know, since I became Muslim, really like uh, I feel content. Inshallah. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy that I became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And how many years has it been now since you've become Muslim? It's almost 20 years, almost. Mashallah. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Alhamdulillah. So you mentioned that uh, it, it, you put on the hijab. Uh, when you became Muslim, was it something that happened immediately after your Shahada mm. or it happened perhaps maybe a few years after or...? Mm. I tried to wear hijab, you know, and occasionally, you know, when we have, uh, when, they, when they had the sisters halaka, you know, and the monthly study group for the sisters, I tried to wear the hijab, and, but I could not uh, put on hijab right away. But I, you know, I tried my best and nobody also forced me to wear it, and, you know, so that was also good, you know, time for me to try my own, you know, find my own timing. Mm. Alhamdulillah. But Alhamdulillah, that was really a great experience, you know, I, I feel like I was respected, my decision, my decision was, you know, my timing was respected. And then also I came, when I came back to Japan, I started working as a company employee in Japanese company. 
and I could not wear you know hijab because of the I had the, also the pressure from the company. I cannot do those things. Okay, so it, it was not allowed at the time. Yeah, but uh, because they asked me to wear the also this company uniform <laughs> with the short skirt and stuff. I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, uh, I, kind of told, I told them from the beginning that, but I have, you know, I'm a Muslim, so I cannot go for the drinking party okay, <laughs> after okay. work. And, uh, but I also cannot wear those sh uh, short skirt. I like to wear the, my own clothes, you know. But they accept, accepted my request. But at the same time, I could not ask for the hijab at the same time. So, but uh, half year later, after I entered the company, I asked for the permission from my uh, boss and the president of the company that I like to wear hijab, and they said, "Okay, you know, as long as it doesn't interfere with my work, you know." So, Alhamdulillah, that was a great alhamdulillah, experience. Alhamdulillah, that you know everyone's very understanding and, and very um, uh, respective, uh, yeah, very respectful, respectful for respectful. the religion. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. If you were to say a few things to, to let's say, non-Muslims uh, about, uh, about Islam, mm -hmm. what, what would, well, what, let's say, what the first three things you would tell them? I will say the first thing, you know, I will say that Islam shares a lot of the Japanese, you know, morals, you know. I wouldn't say, well, like, we have a common basis, Muslim and, and Japanese. Would you share just a little bit of, of some of the common things that you feel? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, as a Muslim, what you're taught, uh, you know, you know, respect others, respect the elders, you know, uh, do not litter on the you know, street, you know, uh, uh, be hygienic, you know, clean your house, clean your body, you know, be clean, you know. It's the same teaching as Islam. At the same time, do not lie, you know, respect the neighbors, you know, also uh, consider the peace and harmony. Don't be selfish. <laughs> and that's a very much uh, a heavy uh, weighted value in Japan too. I think uh, most of Japanese uh, have no like wall or no difference of the Muslims, you know, idea of uh, practicing those values. So, yeah, I can I can feel that people are very giving and very um, polite. Uh, polite, <laughs> yes, yes, and they will show you the way. And from A to A to Z, they will they will actually you know put whatever they're doing, and then they'll help you. Mm. Mashallah. Um, so you have you have the community and society here that uh, you are you are helping the Muslim society. Mm. Um, and so uh, yeah, I just like to share a little bit about, my, about myself. What am I doing here? Mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, I. I found out that well, not recently. I, I my great grandmother was uh, was um, Japanese. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. My great grandmother was Japanese, and she left Japan at the age of seventeen to Malaysia, uh -huh. and she met uh, my great grandfather, mm -hmm. who was a uh, Muslim, mm -hmm. and she reverted to Islam. Her name was Tamano, and then her revert name is Ramla, and so she became Muslim, mm -hmm. and she lived a life in in Malaysia. And my father was trying to find, um, you know, uh, our Japanese relatives, and mm. so we've been doing a bit of research to find them here. And Alhamdulillah, a few months ago, we found them. Mm. Uh, this the few last remaining relatives uh, related to my great grandmother's tree, really? and so uh, it was an interesting uh, meet between us. So the, they found out, you know, who we are and where we're from, that we are Muslim and things like that, and so. It was just, uh, you know, for me, it was it's interesting to come to Japan and, and really kind of experience Islam here and to meet the people, Japanese Muslims who are, uh, you know, doing da'wah and, and doing things like that. So it's, it, you know, it's for me, it's, it's something, it's something where, you know, it inspires me uh, to continue to do da'wah. Because like you said, I think in, in the world today, we need to connect more people. We need to show and spread the good message of Islam yes. to everyone. So Alhamdulillah, um, it, we spent about two days uh, in Shizuoka and in uh, Mount Fuji area. And I have to say, even within these two days, there was so much goodness that and, uh, and, and good experiences that I had. And at the same time, Mount Fuji was such a beautiful experience. I actually, in, in the beginning, I didn't expect to see it because it was just kind of like, yeah, no, nah, it's all right. I think we should just give up. But you know, I think patience really is a virtue and it really paid off. Uh, alhamdulillah, I'm glad we, we all decided to kind of just, you know, wait it out. And yeah, there you go. You know, I know some people that have been to Mount Fuji three times and they didn't even get to see Mount Fuji. So I think it truly is a blessing to be able to have that. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. 
Uh, this is my favorite hadith. I'll read it in Japanese first. Doho ai ni tsuite. Anan bin Malik ni yoruto, yogen sha wa kou yuareta. Anata gata ga jibun jishin wa aisuru yo ni, kyo dai ya, linjin o aisuru yo ni naranai kagiri, makoto no shinko motsu to wa yemasen. This is hadith about the brotherhood and sisterhood, mm. you know. Anan bin Malik said, mm. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unless you, um, Love your brothers and sisters and also the neighbors uh, like the way you love yourself, you know, you do not have the true faith of the in Islam, you know. I love this hadith because this is uh, the brotherhood and sisterhood that I learned from Islam, you know. Before I became Muslim, I did not have this uh, concept or idea that, you know, I was more of a uh, becoming like individualistic <laughs> person, you know, because I was also learning in the United States and the values there. But I think this uh, sacrificing yourself for the benefits of others and caring about your brothers and families and, you know, relatives and, you know, even the strangers, you know, I think it's a very important aspect of uh, being a good human being, you know. Because uh, in this world, if you try to be selfish, you can be extremely selfish in the, you know, creating the hate and uh, those, uh, creating the wars, you know. It's very sad, you know, it's a huge, uh, um, how can I say, huge uh, sin toward the uh, humanism, humanity. humanity, yes. So, and this thing is something that you can do and act on a daily basis to be nice to people, to be nice to your neighbors. And this is a very good teaching for me Masha to Allah. keep going. SubhanAllah, and a beautiful reminder for myself and for everyone who's watching, MashaAllah. <laughs> <laughs>
and all and make it easy for them. Yeah. So, so to I think that's a big lesson that I learned from her as well. It's, it's it's not about nationality or race. At the end of the day, it's our belief that that ties us together. Yeah, which is so beautiful.